Hi, my name is Matthew, and, and I'm here to brief you on the top five steps to ensure a supply chain. Um, first off, I would like to thank the International Institute for Procurement and Market Research for, for allowing me this opportunity to speak with you about this topic. Um, as you may very well know, natural disasters and political uprisings can absolutely sever even the most stable supply chain. So risk management is not just important, it's essential. Historically, there are several different types of events, such as earthquakes, tsunamis, floods, even terrorist attacks and, and protests in many different countries that have caused supply chain disruptions to 85% of businesses. Now, insurance coverage for supply chain disruptions is typically found in property insurance policies, which usually contain contingent business interruption coverage, usually called as CBI. CBI covers your company's losses due to damages uh, suffered by either your suppliers or your customers. Despite the importance of this coverage in, in our global economy, policyholders often do not focus on it. Um, based on experience with prior CBI claims, I can suggest to you that you need to review such coverage and we need to focus on five crucial areas. The first area, um, typically CBI covers losses sustained due to a suspension of operations or something of that nature. One must ensure the policy's definition of suspension and you need to make clear that the policy covers slowdowns. Um, for example, partial or total suspension. Uh, this is absolutely critical because insurance companies frequently assert that there is no coverage unless there has been a total cessation of all operations. Um, in the CBI context, this is even more important. Even catastrophic losses to a supplier or a customer is not likely to cause a policyholder to cease operations entirely. Um, it will slow it down, it could shut it down partially, but entirely going down it is usually pretty unlikely. Um, it will be able to find substitute emergency suppliers or customers who have sufficient inventory to continue operations at least for a period. Number two, absent negotiation. CBI coverage typically comes with a very low sublimit. The CBI limit should be highlighted with your brokers to find the proper balance between premium cost and higher limit um, in an effort to be reflective of the supply chain risk that a company faces. Number three, the words used in policies define the relationship between the policyholder and the customer or supplier very greatly. Some policies limit coverage to named customers or suppliers, while blanket CBI policies can cover loss from damage to direct or direct or indirect suppliers or customers or suppliers or customers of any tier. Limitations to named or direct suppliers or customers can present serious problems and should be avoided. Number four. So, in addition to physical damage to the property of your supplier or customer, other events can stop production or consumption. For example, a service interruption or orders from the government authorities like the frozen zone in lower Manhattan after the 9-11 attacks. It is now possible to purchase dependent properties coverage for this type of risk. It's called contingent time element extended or in layman's terms, CTEE. It extends coverage for civil or military authority, ingress or egress service interruption. This is a major expansion of coverage that many of those affected by the, the Sende earthquake no doubt wish that they had. Number five, and the last one. Um, many policies sold to domestic policyholders contain coverage territory provisions limiting coverage to United States or North America in general. Um, insurance companies will resist paying CBI claims for the loss, even though it is suffered in the U.S., stems from damage to property of a supplier or customer elsewhere. Although there are defenses to this argument, try to get worldwide coverage territory in your policy and just, just to cover your bases. Anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you for watching.